They gave us the JBL Flip 4. We had this little red logo with white letters. It says JBL because it's made by JBL. And we got really excited. Along came the Flip 5. That was a huge disappointment because it was exactly the same logo. A lot of people were not happy about that. And now we've got the JBL Flip 6. Woo! We've got one of the greatest logos the world has ever seen. So this is a huge step up in logos. I've said it before, I'm saying it again. You can't really knock it. You turn it to the side, it flashes a little bit red, glows a little bit red, and gives you a bit of a buzz, and it's absolutely fantastic. The JBL are now taking the logo seriously. So, the brand new JBL Flip 6. What is it? What's improved? How does it sound? That's the whole point of the speaker review. So what are the headlines? Well, the main headline is, do you remember the Flip 4 when it was really old fashioned and we only had a whiffer and a whiffer and it was like stereo. Oh, we don't want stereo. And they gave us the Flip 5. Well, we've been asking for it a long time. They gave us an oval, really, really, really fast racetrack driver and it was mono. So that was fantastic. It was all we've ever asked for. And they stepped up their game yet again. We got a, an oval racetrack, very, 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 very fast a woofer. And we've now got a tweeter. So we've stepped it up. We used to only have two woofers, but now a woofer and a tweeter. Well, it doesn't actually make it stereo. It's still JBL style mono, but it promises better highs. And even if it's not better highs, it promises to go louder. Why is that out? Well, because whereas the, whole, the one woofer on the Flip 5 was 20 watts and the two woofers in a total, were a total of 16 watts. We've now got 20 watts, yes, yeah, still to the woofer, but another 10 watts going to the driver. So 30 watts, 20 watts, 16 watts. Not just a step up in logos. They've really got their game up. 50% increase in on paper wattage. We got used to every generation of a JBL speaker being not backwards compatible with the previous generation. For instance, we had Connect, Connect Plus Party Boost. So we had Connect Plus for the Flip 4. Previously we'd had Connect, so, and that meant it couldn't connect to the Flip 5 because that was Party Boost. And now we've got Party Boost. We've still got Party Boost. Hey. What does that mean? I can connect my Flip 5, my Flip 5 to my Jet Flip 6. So that's the headline specs. If I look at the uh, literature that JBL will come out with, they call it an optimized racetrack shape drive optimized. How's that optimized? It's just a different shape. Well, what you can get out of an oval shape rather than a round shape, a little bit more surface area. Surface area does matter when it comes to the drivers. And in terms of uh, surface area, because for the same input, you can get more volume if you've got greater surface area. Just for kicks and laughs, I did measure. Uh, what the surface area. So we had a surface area, 2,512 square millimeters on the Flip 4, 2,764 square millimeters on the Flip 5, which is obviously a bit of an improvement. And we've now got 3,000 square millimeters. So an improvement again, in terms of surface area, because all things been equal, you'd get a little bit more volume out of it anyway for that surface area. And of course, bigger surface area on your, your woofer your, and your tweeter. You're gonna be able to get a little bit more out of your passive radiators, which of course rely on uh, the internal air pressure, which is related to the actual driven drivers of the woofers. The other uh, headline specs that they are telling us about, well, it's waterproof and dustproof. Yes, it is IPX67, not just IPX67, but it float. oh no, it doesn't float, <laughs> yes, you can drop it in one meter of water, but if you drop it in two meters of water, it'll drop two meters, and then it's not covered by the IPX rating. So one meter of water for 30 minutes, always a bit weird to me when it doesn't actually float. But here's the thing, I've got the GG version, and there'll probably be, end up being 20 different versions. If you don't know what's the version, look at your serial number, first two letters is the version. Yes, the materials will differ a little bit. For instance, on the Flip 5, the CS version uh, floated, but the other versions I had did not float. I don't know if that's gonna be the same thing with the Flip 6, but it's, it's, if I tell you, when you read headline specs and people who are testing these speakers, it's really important to know what version are they talking about. Here's the biggie. 
eco-friendly packaging. Personally, I don't know about you, I will never buy a speaker unless I know it's eco-friendly. Oh, hang on a sec. It's a speaker. I want it to sound good. I don't give. I don't care. Now, what else do they say? So we do have, of course, USB-C connection. We do have the uh, party boost button. We do have the volume up, the volume down, the play, the pause. We do have the bits that light up, the power button, the Bluetooth light, and of course, the power and also doubles as a volume indicator. But what you really, 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 really want to know, coming out, what are we gonna expect in terms of sound? I'm gonna tell you now, this is how I measured the frequency response and I will compare it to the Flip 4 and the Flip 5. The frequency response, first thing to know, very different at all volume levels. Quite big bass adjustment for low volumes, which diminishes and by the time you get to 80%, whereas the 90 hertz bass peak had been just above the four kilohertz peak by 80%, that peak is now well down on that four kilohertz peak. The whole balance of the sound has changed from something of a V-shape to something of an upward slope. And that's the absolute hard limit of any bass. By 100%, it's getting brighter and brighter with that peak three to four kilohertz. Compared to the Flip 5, it's got more bass adjustment at lower volumes. That bass goes a little bit deeper than the JBL Flip 5. The peaks are a bit different. Two clearly defined peaks at 4 kilohertz and then up at around 12 kilohertz on the Flip 5, whereas we're rolling off from 4 kilohertz on the Flip 6. Seems a much warmer balance. The Flip 5 also had that 80% hard limit. And the main difference seems to be a more extended bass on the Flip 6. And then compared to the Flip 4, had even less bass than the Flip 5. So obviously a lot warmer, a lot more bass, deeper bass on the Flip 6. And again, the peaks quite different on the Flip 4, a wider, a four to five kilohertz peak on the Flip 4, another at seven kilohertz, another around well, 15 kilohertz. So again, less extended highs on the Flip 6 with deeper bass promising a warmer signature. So, yeah, kind of interesting on paper when you measure it because very, very warm on paper at low volumes. Not so warm and not so bass heavy as you got the volume scale. And actually, the whole, every volume step looks a little bit different. That kind of rings alarm bells. However, there does look to be decent bass extension for a speaker that size. Now, I'm talking about headline features. I should also mention Bluetooth 5.1. What does that matter to me, Al? Well, it means not really, but uh, the main things to note with Bluetooth 5.1 is you can now, you could now theoretically find your Bluetooth device to within centimeters in terms of accuracy. And after you've paired it initially, it should mean faster pairing. But the other headline feature, Soundcore have been doing it for a long, long, long time. JBL have finally decided to give us an EQ. <laughs> Now, graphic equalizers, parametric equalizers, all very different. And in terms of what they've given us is a three band slider, a three band slider. Look, it's not earth shattering, but what we really want to know is, is that real? Do they do like the Sony like things like, depending on the volume, you put the bass up, but you don't actually get more bass. It will drop mids and highs. That will, to your ears, kind of sound more bass heavy, things like that that also, uh, ultimate ears do, do that, but even worse because they drop the volume as well. Is this a real three band e equalizer or is this some sort of relative playing around with? This is my a frequency response testing of the EQ. It's quite subtle, the difference in the bass, but it is a real difference. It's not a relative difference. We're raising all the way from 800 Hertz. So really we're in the mids and then up to the bass, peaking around the 85 Hertz mark. And we're getting a couple of decibels in a small area but that's at maximum volume. So it's quite a subtle difference in terms of what you're going to get at bass. In terms of the extra bass, this is at 60% volume. Treble, you're now on the rise from 800 hertz. Again, it's covering the mids. So what happens with the mids as well? That's actually extending from the bass all the way up to the harmonics. So the EQ is real. It's not a relative difference. It is a real difference, but it affects a wide range of the frequency and even at maximum a little bit subtle, although the mids have the biggest difference. But here's the thing, going to differ by volume. By the time you've hit maximum volume, looking for more bass, you don't actually get any more deeper bass. It's really affecting 
The upper bass, again, only a little bit. So it's real different, but it's subtle. It's not a major game changer. It's enough that they can market that they now have embedded EQ. So fair dues to uh, JBL. It is, it is a real equalizer. You're not losing headroom. There is some headroom there. So they're not reducing volume to give you artificially more headroom. If you increase the bass, you really do increase the bass. If you increase the mids, you get more mids and more on the treble. However, depending on where you are on the volume scale, what you're adding will be different. And it's not, the headroom is not huge, but it's real. Now, because I know if I come up with an custom IQ based on that graphic equalizer, someone will say, or loads of you will say, well, that's not fair. We want to know where it sounds out of the box. I, I, it doesn't, whatever I do, no, someone's gonna, not going to be happy. So what I'm going to do for this first video is I'm going to put the bass at plus one. Because that is a real increase in bass. I think it helps it. Well, I know it helps it, especially when you go up to high volumes. Perhaps at low volumes, you might not want to do it as we're already quite bass heavy and warm. However, Alan Ross rule is only use EQ if it can be embedded into the firmware. Tick can do that. You can embed it into firmware and it makes a difference. Yes, it does make a difference. And, but I also want to, because it's quite subtle, isn't, it makes a little bit of a difference, but not enough that you don't get a handle on what it would sound like in default mode. Anyway, so I'm going to give you um, a little tester. Flip six in its default mode. Flip six, bass plus one, AB. You have a listen. Let's see if you can hear much of a difference. So in the real world, on real tracks, you do get more bass, but it's subtle. At plus one, we're getting a half a decibel more in the bass. You can hear it if you listen out for it, but you'd have to listen out for it to really hear of that difference. We've got a decibel more at 60 hertz, but you can see it's subtle. But if you like your bass, it's enough to say there's no downside to raising the bass. You're not losing elsewhere as you do in some of their apps with EQ, and you're not losing volume. Plus one. The difference is real. It's not a huge amount, but it's real. It's half a decibel, enough to for me to say, yeah, uh, I, that's how I would leave it. Now, when I say that, I'm gonna get to all the testing. It's not how I would do it in the real world. I don't want to give any spoilers, but I'll get to that uh, by the end of the video. So please watch a load of more adverts. Get to the end of the video. I'm gonna explain where I am with the EQ. However, for the actual testing in this video, I'm gonna give it a little bit more bass, but not that much that you won't get a handle on how it sounds in its default mode. So that means I'm gonna be doing my low volume test first, around 50%. I'm gonna compare it to both the JBL Flip 4 because a lot of you didn't upgrade to the Flip 5 and will want to know how much more of an upgrade is it now. And of course against the Flip 5, because you want to know how it sounds against the Flip 5. So against both of those speakers. I should also point out when we're talking about EQ and the fact that the party boost and it's still party boost and you can link um, the Flip four, 6 and the Flip 5, when you're in party boost mode, you can't use the embedded EQ. Only when you're using it standalone. As soon as you hit that party boost, whether it's to link up in a party mode or indeed stereo, you cannot use custom EQ. So that's another reason why not to get too carried away with tailoring the custom EQ because it doesn't, sound core carries through if you do a stereo in party mode. JBL EQ, with all the might of JBL, does not carry through once you try to connect more than one speaker. That's a big downer. However, is it a major improvement? Let's have a listen, around 50% of volume.
is a real improvement in the bass. It's actually quite impressive at lower volumes. And at a money plus one, there is more headroom in the bass. It's already very, very warm. And it's a clear improvement on the Flip 5. I have to say, I have to say Flip 5, Flip 5, Flip 6, although they don't have the highs because it's all about, uh, you know, upper bass and the highs and the mids, of course, on the Flip 4, it does have more highs. But they, these sound more pleasing. I find them both a little bit more fizzy. There's still people who prefer the stereo of the Flip 4, but I'm finding that now a bit thin. Not a great listen. By today's standards, when you can get a nice warm full bass without it being overblown. The Flip 6 is it's very mid-bass heavy, which gives it a nice warm rounded bass. Whereas we've got a bit more upper bass on the Flip 5. I just think the balance is better on the Flip 6. I think it's a real improvement. It's clearly the best. If you don't want bass, <laughs> you're not going to love it. But it's impressive what they've done in the bass. It's clearly the best uh, JBL Flip speaker at this point. But not perfect. There's a little bit, there's a, there is a dip in the mids. It can, that can make the vocals a little bit recessed. And there are real differences in the tuning of these three speakers. However, uh, lowish volumes, around 50%. The bass is impressive. It's the most pleasing to my ears of these three speakers. And what happens when we push it? I've already noted it clearly on paper looks different tuning no matter what volume you're at. The sound is going to change. Louder listening around 75% of volume. <laughs> these louder volumes against the thin sounding flip four and the duller sounding flip five but it's not perfect by any means there is a harshness 
to the highs now, depending on your ears, you may, obviously you can dial, and when I talked about EQ before, you can dial that down. I'm not doing it in this video because that's not what this video is about. It's about letting you know in default, I'm just pushing that bass a little bit, how it's gonna sound. You can dial that down, of course, the highs in the EQ, and you can put the bass up, and it's gonna alter the sound quite significantly. However, you, you need to tailor it at each volume, and I'm trying to stick to one EQ. That's not really possible with the tuning on the JBL Flip 6, which is bass heavy at low volumes, getting harsher as you go up the volumes. However, 75% probably is as loud as you wanna play these speakers and still get a decent sound. Just starting to get a bit harsh, but yes, it's the clear winner again with these speakers. Now, maximum volume, 30 watts on paper, 20 watts on paper, 16 watts on paper, how loud do they actually go? We grew up a little too fast. I miss the days that we chill and relax. Where did the time go? It all passed. Now I need to go back. I had no worries, but always had plans. The only thing I did was dig out the trash. Now it's much harder to laugh. Hard to get up and not work on my craft. Yeah. I need inspiration. Don't need no validation. No more medication. Just try some meditating. I don't need you to save me. Feel like all of you hate me. Everything's been so hard with all the situations lately. I just need to numb the pain. For a minute, I just wanna run away or vacation. I don't know what else to say now. I just need to know my love. When I was young, they would all look after me. I don't know why, but I feel like a burden. I spent my life overthinking my purpose. I can't really climb, so used to the hurt. And trauma keeps up at me at the wrong moment. Oh, I just want to numb the pain for a minute. I just want to run away on vacation. I don't know what else to say now. I just need to numb the pain. So loudness matched. You got significantly more bass, two decibels more at 60 hertz on the flip six compared to the flip five, four decibels up on the flip four. Got a little bit more in terms of highs on the flip five and even more in terms of highs on the flip four. The upper bass on the flip six is about the same as the flip five. The real gain is in the mid and the deep bass where most of us really want the bass and even extends a bit more into the high end of the harmonics compared to the flip five, which had this kind of hard cut off 15, 16 kilohertz. So the flip six, not technically the loudest, that goes to the flip four by 0.2 in terms of luffs, that's nothing. And we do have the bigger peak on the flip six. The flip four can do that because it's not pushing bass. Minus 36 at 60 hertz, that's four decibels down on the flip six, which in turn is two decibels up on the flip five. So more or less the flip six goes the loudest, it has the most bass, but hey, it's also pretty harsh. The highs are actually higher than the flip five, which now sounds a bit smooth compared to the flip six at maximum volume. And we even have more mids on the flip six. You can, of course, adjust that in the EQ. Technically in luffs, just the edge to the flip four. Well, how, how, come on, how, how can 16 watts be better than 30 watts? How can it be louder? Well, I'll tell you how, because there's a load of bass on the Flip 6, and that takes a lot more of the amp to drive. If you don't have bass to drive, as on the Flip 4, you can push the mids and the highs to even greater volumes. And that's how it 
just nudges ahead. But even on uh, on peaks, the Flip 6 still comes out as the loudest. Clearly has the most bass, but hey, that's the same bass as you had at 80% when it was already starting to get a bit, har bit harsh. And it sounds harsh. That's not a good listen. In the real world, you're going to drop the EQ. You're going to go into the EQ. You're going to drop the treble. You're probably going to come down to minus two, and you're probably going to put the bass to plus two. It's not going to give you any more deep bass. It will give you more upper bass, and it will bleed over into the mids, and you'll get a bit more mids. It will balance it out a bit, but you'll lose a bit of volume. But that's not a great listen. But if you're looking for the loudest speaker on the table in terms of peaks, it's still the loudest. Um, technically, in luffs, the Flip 4 is the loudest. The Flip 5, well, yeah, I, it's... I was never a big fan of the Flip 5. The Flip 6 has a lot more to offer from, from my point of view, but mostly in low to moderate volumes where that is very heavy in the mid bass and there's a lot of bass adjustment at lower volumes that you lose as you got the volume scale. It just becomes thinner again, like which was my issue with the Flip 5. You either are gonna like or not like the Flip 4. A lot of people still like that because they don't want bass, and that's fair enough, and you're gonna get stereo, you're gonna get a clear sound, but for me, personally, it's gonna sound a bit thin. Anybody who likes bass is gonna go for the Flip 6. So, it, oh, again over the specs, come on now, give us all the specs like you normally do. You'll never guess where they make this speaker, and I don't mean in a factory, they make this in China. Absolute shocker to me, in terms of what you're gonna pay, well, you know, you can still buy the Flip 4 and the Flip 5, you can get the Flip 4 for about 80 quid or $99. You can get the Flip 5 for about 90 quid or $100. And at the moment, the Flip 6 is costing you about $120 or $130. Now, $120 quid, it's not cheap. Is it worth $120 quid? What you can't get elsewhere with this kind of a speaker is the form factor. If you're literally looking for a speaker to travel with and you are going to knock it, you are going to throw it about, that is why you're paying a premium with this form factor with JBL, which I do like, you're not paying that premium because it sounds great. There are speakers that cost a little bit more and sound a lot better or a bit less and sound better, which I'll get to in another video at some point. But as a package, 120 pound for JBL in the kind of, when, in, when they're talking 160 quid for the Sonus Rome, that's, that's, a decent, that's a decent price because you can get an oppressive amount of bass out of this if you're listening at mod moderate volumes. What you won't get at the end of the day though, even though the bass is impressive, it's a big sound. Small drivers will always sound small. I don't want you to get carried away with it. It's a 30 watt speaker with impressive bass and that's all you need to know. You also need to know how big is the sound, how compressed will it sound to your ears. And don't forget, there are recessed vocals on that. It is of course SBC. It's got a 17.3 watt hour battery. It's about the same as the Flip 5, but it's a big improvement on the 11 watt hours of the Flip 4. It is 5.1 in terms of Bluetooth against the 4.2 the other two. It is party boost, the same as the Flip 5, whereas you can't connect to the Connect Plus of the Flip 4. It is USB-C on the Flip 6 and the Flip 5. You can't use any of them in the power bank, and you could, because it's old-fashioned, when you used to get features, uh, and did we get an auxiliary? I think we got an auxiliary on this, didn't we? Yes, we even got an auxiliary on the Flip 4, and we also got the ability to use it as a speakerphone. So, no auxiliary, no auxiliary. Can't use it as a speakerphone, can't use it as a speakerphone. 515 grams, 540 grams. Just a little bit heavier now, 550 grams for the Flip 6. It is now IPX67. What's the 6? The 6 means dust proof in terms of, wow, well it's Bluetooth 5.1 now. We're talking zero latency. Oh, hang on, JBL, 160. My cutoff point, 80 milliseconds, still getting 116 milliseconds. That's disappointing in terms of uh, Bluetooth latency, in terms of streaming via my Android device, but it's better than the 200 milliseconds I get on the Flip 5 and the 300 milliseconds I get on the Flip 4. We do have a tweeter now, of course, on the JBL Flip 6. It was cool. Well, they've only got one whiffer. I guess they stuck it in the middle on the Flip 5. No. No, they didn't. They had a drink at lunchtime and they put it on one side and they thought people are going to love that. I don't know. Some, it is strange, but at least now they've decided to do something with the extra room. And we've got a woofer and a tweeter. So, Alan Ross' conclusion is, yeah, they've done pretty well with the JBL Flip 6. It's not a game changer. Well, you said it was better. It's better, but it's not changed the scenery. The Bluetooth 
portable speaker front because it's impressive at lower volumes. And then there's they're limiting bass and you're not getting much bass, but you're getting a, quite a screechy sound with that, with that uh, tweeter as you've got the volume scale. And then you're going to have to go into the EQ, which they've given you to reduce the highs to have a pleasant sound. But you can tailor it to get a decent sound. So me personally, I'm now listening minus one sometimes, minus two on the treble, plus two on the bass. Just remember at lower volumes, that may be too bass heavy for you. But I'm sticking for the testing at plus one and treble at zero. But in the real world, you will pro I would imagine you're gonna go minus one or minus two on the treble to balance it and so it doesn't sound harsh. Plus two, because it's free bass, isn't it? Uh, in, the, in the app. There is my review of the JBL Flip 6, which I give a thumbs up. Just don't get carried away thinking, well, I don't need the JBL Extreme 3 now. Oh, we've got loads of bass. Small drivers sound small. It does sound small. It's a small speaker, that's why. Thank you for watching. See you in another video. I got their life, I got their life Ain't a project wife, got my logic right Cause I'm not your type I got their life, I got their life Sorry my heart, I get it right I'ma just live my life I ain't about that, I ain't about that life uh.